Good afternoon, everybody. This is Sangeeta Saxena, editor, Aviation and Defense Universe, getting you live from New Delhi, where we have with us a very big occasion and a very, very warm occasion. Boeing is celebrating the 10th anniversary of PHI in India, and we have with us Mr. Salil Gupte, the head of Boeing in India. Salil, welcome to ADU's chat room. Wonderful to have you here, and congratulations on turning 10. Thank you. Congratulations to India and Indian industry on 10 years of the P8 as well. And uh, Salil, you know, it's been a team effort. We saw here this morning your supply chain and one of your major partners. And uh, how has this supply chain grown and uh, how much of P8I is Indian? Well, of course, every P8I has some element of India in it. And what I will say is that over the last 10 years, uh, the Indian supply chain for Boeing has grown massively. Uh, we've become by far the largest foreign OEM in terms of our supply chain here. We've gone from under 2,000 crores per year um, in sourcing from India to over 8,000 in recent years and we're closing in very rapidly on 10,000 crores per year of which two-thirds is actually manufactured. And so that is a remarkable level of growth and it's a remarkable level of capability development uh, over the years as we've gone from simple assemblies to complex assemblies to working with composite parts to thermoplastics and, and, and you name it. And I think as it relates to the P8, you know, we have 15 suppliers that are working on the P8. One of them, uh, Dynamatics, actually just won uh, Boeing's Global Supplier of the Year Award uh, in the U.S. Uh, just a month ago. So clearly, uh, Indian industry has a significant presence of on the P8, and it's a very high visibility presence as well. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, with this, uh, with 10 years and 12, uh, we expecting six more. So how are they going to be different? Are they, are they going to be exactly the same which you expect, which Indian Navy already has? Have you heard some back end stories from, uh, <laughs> you know, it's wonderful to know something which has not been announced. Well, I mean, uh, what I can say is that all governments who look at more at the P8 now are seeking more capability out of the so it's not just India, but other governments as well who are looking at the P8 very closely to add to their capabilities. They're seeking more connectivity. They're seeking more processing power. They're seeking um, that this P8 is such a flexible tool that can be used in so many different arenas, not just anti-submarine warfare, but ISR. They're seeking to maximize all of those capabilities, and there's certain equipment that can be put on the aircraft to be able to do that. So I think India is not alone in evaluating those types of things. As it relates to specifically what India is looking for, that will of course be up to the Navy, Indian Navy's requirements. Uh, and the timeline uh, for an additional six or whatever the number is uh, will also be up to them uh, here, uh, here as well. And uh, do you expect to grow the supply chain uh, for the next lot if that happens? Is it something which you would like to now produce in India which is still coming from outside? Well, I think we are always looking at that. I think I'll give you the answer is yes. Uh, I think we will uh, we will be looking at a more MRO in India, for example. So we already do the heavy checks for the P8s and that MRO in India today. Uh, that was the first checks of that nature to be done outside the United States. So that's again a very unique capability that we built here in India for maintenance uh, and. We would seek to grow that further with component maintenance, like for landing gears, where we've already signed an MOU with AIESL um, to do that uh, here in India. And we're now looking, of course, beyond that. Uh, I think if we were able to get more aircraft here in India, there would be more scale that would help close a business case uh, to be able to make certain investments in further MRO. And when you talk of skill development for these, uh, does Boeing have a tie up with the National Skills Development Council for it or is it your own skill? Well, we do. So we, we have it with, that's a great question. We do work with the government on this. Uh, we also uh, work with uh, various, uh, for various um, organizations like Learning Links Foundation. Uh, to do skilling in different areas. We have a differently abled uh, persons uh, skilling program with them, uh, with many of our supplier partners. Uh, we have programs called the Learn and Earn program that, that brings in young people uh, to do kind of vocational programs and then they move into the actual uh, factory environment as well. We have programs where we partner with Tata to bring in young women from rural areas 
uh, to bring them into our factories and show a certain subset of agrarian or rural society that even if you've never considered a manufacturing future for your children, that is there for you in all parts of Indian society can become part of the manufacturing revolution in India. And I think all of these are just part of the broad spectrum of skilling uh, that we do here in India and we partner with both public and private sector to do it. And Boeing also has a very major history of corporate social responsibility in India. So what at the moment, what is the latest on that front? Well, I think we, we, we do a whole bunch in a whole different areas. I mean, we've invested you know, well over $10 million in the last three, four years in this space. Uh, and it's not just the money. It's not just the, the checks. There's a lot of companies that can write big checks. But what differentiates Boeing, Boeing's approach to corporate social responsibility is our employees, our people are involved in the programs every single week. We have we invest in sanitation and toilet building. We invest in education. Uh, we invest in literacy programs. We invest in education for girls. We invest in veteran skilling. And across every one of those areas, our employees are contributing their own time as well as money to take these programs forward. So yes, there's CSR programs, but there's the multiplier effect of our teams getting involved at the ground level to take them forward. And I think that's, that's really what makes our program special and unique amongst, um, amongst foreign companies doing CSR in India. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, that's something which really attracts attention, which I feel. And uh, in addition to that, uh, Salil, is there, you talked about robotics in one of your uh, lines in Hyderabad. So is there a plan to make it state of the art, you know, I mean, what, what are the plans and what do you do with this robotic uh, well, well, I line? Think, so I think you're referring to, uh, you're referring to the 737 MAX vertical fin, which has uh, some automation on the line. Now that automation, of course, still has to be powered by humans and there are very highly skilled uh, technicians that are that are uh, that are leveraging that automation. That automation is there not to replace human workers. That automation is there to. to it's basically drilling holes on the 737 Max vertical fin, and it's there to ensure a certain level of repeatability that would not be possible with human hands. And so sometimes you see this automation come in and people get worried about it replacing jobs. I would actually argue that it creates jobs because what it does is it brings capability to India that did not exist here before and it allows India to grow its manufacturing base further that will over the long term create tens of millions and probably hundreds of millions of jobs uh, in the decades to come. It's just a really great example uh, of even in India us bringing the latest capabilities here and India being a showcase for the world of innovation and technology and manufacturing. Thank you so much Salil, that was wonderful and I am sure that in the next three months when we have the Indian Navy Day very near, I'm sure we'll have more to talk about and more to tell us and uh, you know we'll do another one with just PHIS focus, that'll be wonderful. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Thanks, looking forward to it.